Hey, it's Rob here. If you've listened to the Doctor Who Show podcast over the years, you'll know my afternoon show story where I went on a Doctor Who quiz that aired nightly before episodes of Remembrance of the Daleks went out in Australia. For literally years, I've mentioned the quiz from time to time, but was never able to show you any footage or even play any audio as it was junked from the ABC archives. Junked! just like Pat Troughton. And in 35 years, no one had ever digitized their old VHS tapes and put it online. Until February of this year, enter a Sydney Doctor Who fan, Scott Wilcoxon, who had the footage on VHS, digitized it and put it on YouTube for all to see. My sincere thanks to Scott for doing that. It was such a thrill to see my 13 year old self on the quiz with my mates. Seeing the footage again actually inspired me to make this video where I tell the story of that day, how it happened, who the contestants were, what the afternoon show was, and so on. Stuff you can't tell just by watching the footage, and perhaps particularly handy for overseas viewers. And before we kick off, I do want to make it clear. This is just my story. There will be other recollections out there. There may even be a bigger video beginning to be made on this. But for the time being, sit back, relax, and let me tell you the story of how I was a teenage Time Lord. Yep, that's me, aged 13, on Australian national television, way back in a time we called 1988. So how did I end up on the ABC, dressed as the fifth doctor, Peter Davison, on a show that I watched religiously every afternoon? It's a long story. The afternoon show aired on the ABC here in Australia from February 1987 to December 1993. Think of it as a rapper show. That's rapper with a W for the younger folks. For whatever programming was on that day between 5pm and 6pm. Basically, you'd have a few minutes of comments from the show's host, then a program, then another segment of the show, maybe a competition of some kind, or a report about something for young kids, then another program, and so on. You get the idea. The kind of shows which aired during the life of the afternoon show were quite varied. The Mysterious Cities of Gold, Grange Hill, Inspector Gadget, Count Duckula, Press Gang, Danger Mouse, Roger Ramjet, Degrassi Junior High, The Ratties, Banana Man, you can't do that on television, The Trapdoor, Metal Mickey, and The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe. And honestly, that's only a small sample of the series that appeared on the show because, keep in mind, the afternoon show was going out five days a week for most of each year for seven years. It burned through a lot of content. The original and longest serving host of the show was James Valentine, in the big chair from the show's inception in 1987 through to 1990. 26 years old, during his first year on the show, Valentine was already well known for playing the saxophone with two Australian bands, The Models and Jojo Zepp. Towards the end of his time as host, he'd also helped to found the Sydney-based supergroup of sorts, Absent Friends, which featured members of In Excess, Ganga Jang, The Models and singer Wendy Matthews. But now we're getting ahead of ourselves, and maybe even a little off track for those of you who are here for the Doctor Who. Let's fix that now. On Monday the 31st of October 1988, Halloween, the afternoon show began airing season 24 of Doctor Who. Aside from highlighting how late we used to get Doctor Who in Australia, season 24 had aired a year prior on the BBC, and as hardcore fans, we'd already seen it on bootleg videotapes. This was also quite notable, as Doctor Who had traditionally been screened later in the day. In the 1960s, for example, Doctor Who had gone out in the 7.30pm time slot. In the 1980s, where we were at the time, it was the lead-in for the 7pm news. Now, for the first time in its history on the ABC, Doctor Who found itself brought forward in the schedule to dedicated children's programming, rather than a pre- or post-news time slot. Because this news series would run into November 1988, the series' 25th anniversary month, the ABC also made the inspired 
and unprecedented call to also purchase Remembrance of the Daleks from the next season to also play as the last story of the season 24 run, with it all ending on the 23rd of November to celebrate the anniversary. Which brings us to the 25th anniversary of Doctor Who in Australia. Enter fandom, stage left. As a member of the Australasian Doctor Who fan club, as well as my local area group, which was called Time Flight, I was very involved in Australian fandom at this time. And when you're talking about a group of people as small as Australia's Doctor Who fan community was back then, it was very easy to be totally immersed in it. Do you like writing? Great, write for this fanzine. You don't like writing? Great, help fold these fanzines for mailing to people, and so on. There were no airs and graces. If you wanted to get involved, you were suddenly in the middle of anything and everything. There was always something to do. I was assigned to help with security at the Console 88 convention in Sydney. Security. I was 13 years old. <laughs> Maybe a story for another time. But that was fandom. And so, being part of Time Flight and the Australasian group, as it was called at the time, it now just goes by the Australian tag, I was known to the Australasian club president, Dallas Jones. One day, out of the blue, Dallas asked, if I'd be free to take part in a quiz on the afternoon show, on a school day, to tie in with Doctor Who's 25th anniversary. Of course, I said, I didn't need to think twice about that. Why wouldn't I want to be on the telly and have a day off school as well? Also, knowing I had access to a Fifth Doctor costume, because I'd worn it in a fan film the previous year, again, an example of being in the thick of things if you stuck your hand up, I knew I could make quite an appearance. Other members of Time Flight were also asked to appear so that on the day of recording what would be the three rounds of the quiz show concept, four of the six contestants would actually be Time Flight members. Time Flight President Mark Douglas, Fraser Hawthorne, Harvey Callahan, and me. Joining us were two fans we knew quite well from fandom in general and saw regularly even though they weren't part of our local group. Tony Cook and Kate Orman. And yes, that's THE Kate Orman who went on to write a ton of Doctor Who novels and audios for Virgin Publishing, Telos Publishing, BBC Books, and also Big Finish. At the time of recording this quiz in 1988, however, none of that had begun, and Kate was simply writing fanfiction by the truckload for all of the local fanzines kicking around our clubs at the time. I remember the day of recording well. Most of us travelled together by train as we lived in the same local area to where the ABC studios were located at the time in Gore Hill on Sydney's lower North Shore. Much like the BBC moving from Television Centre, the ABC has also long moved on from this building, but at the time it was a massive, if antiquated, TV studio. Think going into the BBC in the 80s. It was the same vibe. On arrival, we were ushered into a large dressing room where the six contestants, along with Dallas Jones and another member of Time Flight who wasn't going to appear on the show but wanted to support us and maybe have a day off school too, Kyle Bullock could relax and change into costumes if we had them and basically wait until we were required. At which point we have our first big story from the day. There was a TV set in the room and I turned it on. On screen, James Valentine was standing on the afternoon show set, asking Doctor Who quiz questions. But we were all in the dressing room. The quiz wasn't on yet. As a geeky type with that very Doctor Who affliction of being obsessed with how TV shows are made, I quickly twigged that we were watching an in-house feed while the afternoon show team worked out the blocking, the sound, graphics and so on for the quiz. Naturally, I called the others over to watch, and while I have more to say on this, here's Kate Orman on a recent episode of the Sirens of Audio podcast, also remembering the moment and the day in general. Now, you mentioned watching Time and the Rani, and yeah. I remember that period very well too. It was shown on uh, a program called The Afternoon Show on the ABC, and that is where oh, I no. first saw you uh, on television. Tell us about that day where you ended up on a Doctor Who quiz on the afternoon show. 
to my eternal embarrassment, um, that was so much fun uh, with James Valentine hosting. And we all, they said, they must have spoken to the Australasian Doctor Who fan club and said, can you get a few fans who are, you know, who, who can appear on television? Come on in. And so we sat there, we didn't have buzzers. Do you remember this? We had squeaker toys and that was our buzzers. And um, we were after a series of questions. The funniest thing happened though, a bunch of us were in sort of the green room for people who were gonna be on the afternoon show. And for some reason they were piping whatever, they, they, they must have been running through the photographs they were gonna use in the quiz on some console somewhere but they were piping that output into the green room so we got to see the photo all the photos that they were going to ask us about later and I said who's that guy and somebody said oh that's Sydney Newman I went oh you mean the guy who created the show and they said yeah 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 so then you're sitting there you know and I'm just wearing this insane blue hat I have no excuse with my squeaker toy and they said who's this photograph of and I said oh James in my very best RP voice that Sydney Newman he created the program it is oh the whole thing is like that super earnest super low budget and completely hilarious and um, I hope to god there isn't a clip of it on YouTube so as Kate says we had yet to record the quiz but suddenly had an insight into some of the questions and as I recall, when an ABC representative came into the room shortly afterwards, I quickly switched the TV off. But Harvey, our club member, and my schoolmate told her that we'd been watching the feed. Harvey, you traitor! This resulted in, believe it or not, the on-off knob being removed from the TV set physically, so we couldn't turn it on anymore and monitor the studio. To add insult to injury, it's Harvey who actually answers several questions oddly early during the quiz, having benefited from seeing the feed, the feed that he reported to the ABC. How many floors does Harvey? 304. 304. And who... But that would be during the second session recorded. The first group to go down to the studio were Mark, Kate and Fraser. The rest of us sat and waited for what felt like an eternity, and when they returned, I was dumbfounded to learn that Mark had not won the quiz. In these early years of my fandom, I thought Mark knew everything. How on earth could he lose the quiz? I suddenly became very worried about my chances. Although I'd watched Doctor Who for most of my short life at the time, I'd only been a complete ferret of a fan for about two years or so, so... While I prided myself on knowing some stuff, I didn't have half of Mark's knowledge. But no time to fret about that, as Harvey, myself, and the much older Tony Cook were ushered down to the studio to record our round. As we made our way through the cavernous space towards the afternoon show set, I remember totally geeking out, seeing parts of sets from other ABC programs I recognised, and generally being amazed at the insides of a working TV studio. I also remember seeing a school group on some kind of excursion. In my mind, they're all teenage girls, but maybe I just invented the all-girls angle for greater embarrassment in the years since whenever I think back on the event. I know I just felt extreme self-consciousness standing there, dressed as the Fifth Doctor, while teenage girls and whoever else were looking at me with various looks of surprise, bewilderment, and pity. But then, onto the set, we were introduced to James Valentine, and I had that sensation you have whenever you meet someone you've only observed on TV or film before. He looks just like he does on screen. We were sat at a table and shown the objects that would act as our buzzers for the quiz. Harvey had some sort of party favour to blow into. I had a squeaky hammer, possibly a dog's toy, and Tony had a tambourine. This is the first we knew of the quiz not having proper buzzers. I don't recall the previous group telling us that when we crossed paths earlier. And cards on the table, I was a bit dismayed by this. It didn't feel right. It felt a bit jokey, as if the quiz and by association Doctor Who wasn't being taken seriously. Yes, I was that kind of 13-year-old. 
Also, as many people pointed out to me at the time, and again when this footage resurfaced recently, Tony's tambourine has a massive advantage, making sound as soon as you shake it. Harvey, meanwhile, had to raise something to his lips and blow, while I had to squeeze something and then let it go again before any sound came out. When you're answering rapid-fire Doctor Who questions, timing is everything. Anyway, the quiz came and went in what felt like the blink of an eye. After all the waiting around and the schoolgirl incident, I still don't remember feeling particularly nervous when we were actually recording it. Thinking about and answering the questions kept us all too occupied, I think. We then hung around the set while the highest scorers from the first two rounds recorded a final episode as the rest of us watched on from a few metres away in the studio. At the end of that round, which was the episode due for the 23rd of November 1988, Doctor Who's 25th anniversary, a cake was brought on and we were all ushered on to set two, which meant that our mate Kyle got to appear on TV after all, and we sang happy birthday to the Doctor. When the cameras shut down, I recall an ABC stills photographer taking pictures of us on set and Kate pondering if we could get the top off the Dalek so one of us could perhaps make it work. This idea was quickly shut down by someone, whether they were just from the ABC or part of BBC Enterprises, which was loaning the prop on the day. I have no idea. James Valentine then started handing out Doctor Who VHS tapes to everyone, and I was absolutely delighted when he handed me the five Doctors. Score! I'd been given a story featuring my Doctor, Davo. It made the whole day worth it, even if I didn't win the quiz. And that's it. Oh, aside from when I was in maths at school the following week, and the teacher said he had something special to play in the class. He then inserted a VHS tape into the classroom TV and proceeded to screen the entire quiz segment I had been on, dressed as Davo, to a largely bewildered classroom of my peers. There weren't many Doctor Who fans at my school. Indeed, in 1988, it felt like most kids didn't even know what Doctor Who was anymore in Australia. I felt like a total dweeb. Even more embarrassing than the schoolgirl incident at the ABC, as I had to see these people all day, every day, for the rest of my school life. But in the years since, particularly after I started making the Doctor Who Show podcast, which has given me reason to mention the afternoon show quiz from time to time, I've actually been searching for footage of the show. I even contacted the ABC in May of 2015 to request the footage, even if I had to pay for it. But their reply ran in part, quote, Unfortunately, it looks like we only kept a couple of afternoon show eps from 1988 and none from November, so we can't help you, I'm afraid. My apologies for any disappointment. End quote. And so it was with great excitement that I woke up one morning in February of 2023 to a former Time Flight member tagging me to a Facebook story. That member wasn't even there on the day, but did recognise myself, Mark, Harvey and Fraser, and knew it would mean a lot for me in particular to see the footage. So he tagged me. And how right he was. My sincere thanks to Australian Doctor Who fan Scott Wilcoxon for digitising the footage, putting it up on YouTube, and also letting me make use of it too. Funnily enough, when this upload happened, Mark, who also appeared on the quiz but now lives in the UK, so I don't see him all that often, told me that he also had the footage to hand, but just hadn't digitised it. What do they say about TARDISes? You wait all day for one and then two come at once? So, from being junked by the ABC, just like an episode of Classic Doctor Who, to being found again, twice, in off-air copies in more recent times, the footage of myself playing a teenage Time Lord, along with my friends back in 1988, has been an incredible thing for me to view again. It inspired me to make this video account so that, for anyone interested, there's more of a story around the footage than just a 35-year-old video clip sitting on YouTube for the rest of eternity. I hope by giving some names and some context, I've added to this piece of arguably important Doctor Who fan history, at least with regard to Australian fandom. On a personal note, from 35 years in the future, it doesn't matter that I lose my round of the quiz. It doesn't matter that I seem to answer more questions than I get points for. 
It doesn't matter about the buzzers or people answering questions early because they knew what was going to be asked. None of it. What the footage means to me today is that it shows a bit of what fandom was like back then. A bit innocent, maybe a bit rough around the edges, but a time that's largely undocumented in a visual way, despite a lot of cool stuff happening. And even more than that, this is me, with my mates at the time, doing something extraordinary when you think about it. Yet to us, it was just what you would do when someone asked you to help celebrate your favourite show's anniversary. A happy time. Well, there it is. I was a teenage Time Lord. Did you enjoy that? I certainly had a lot of fun making it. My thanks again to Scott Wilcoxon for allowing us to use the footage. I'm still pinching myself that it exists again in these off-air copies. I truly thought it was lost. Also, I think it's worth mentioning that the following year, the afternoon show had a second attempt at a Doctor Who quiz with a much better set, no corny costumes and so on. That's been up on YouTube for some years, but if you've never seen it before, seek that out too. And one last piece of housekeeping, I've just uploaded some new freshly colour graded versions of the afternoon show episodes which match the clips used in this video, so do check those out. They're the clips you've seen before, no new material, just with better colour. Anyway, that's it. I've been Rob, do let us know what you thought of this video or anything else you've seen or heard us make lately at hello at the dwshow.net and we'll see you next time on the Doctor Who Show.